All right, ladies and gentlemen, um, yesterday we took a look at how to balance equations. We did a couple of examples, but we're going to do a few more today, see if we can't um, kind of wrap our heads around it a little bit more and talk a little bit more about what it is you're allowed to do and not allowed to do. Um, you're free to take notes. Uh, it's not required. I'm not going to ask to see them. Um, however, it may help you as you uh, get ready to get started on your assignment later today. All right. So I'm going to try and primarily write on uh, on here today what it is I would like you to write when you are doing your your assignment today. You do need to show your work. It's kind of like in math. Your math teacher needs to see the process that you go through in order to get to your final result. And really, you need to see the process that you're going through in order to get to your final result as well. Um, you can certainly try to do it in your head, but it's going to be unsuccessful a good part of the time. Um, so it is best to show your work and therefore that is what I am requiring on your assignment today um, for full credit. Your first step is always going to be to draw a line under the arrow to help you uh, just be able to visually see the difference between the two sides of the equation. Your reactant side on the left, your product side on the right. So we're going to start by listing on the left side all of our elements. So we have Ba, which is barium. We have Cl, which is chlorine. I know that kind of looks like a capital I. It is not. Whenever you see a C with something that looks like a capital I after it, you can almost guarantee it's actually an L for Cl for chlorine, not carbon and iodine. Carbon and iodine really do not bond to one another. Um, so you're probably not going to see any iodines in these equations. All right, we also have hydrogen. We have sulfur and we have oxygen. All right. Quick glance at the other side will show us that we have the same elements. They're in a different order, but we're going to write them in the same order because that's going to help us to be able to compare our numbers to tell whether we are balanced or unbalanced. So we're going to write them in the same order on the other side. Let's go back to the left side and start counting our, our atoms. For barium, we have just one. For chlorine, there's a subscript of two, so we have two chlorines. For hydrogen, subscript of two, two hydrogens. For sulfur, no subscript, so there's one. And oxygen, there's a subscript of four, so we have four. Let's take a look at the product side, the right side. Barium, we have one. Chlorine, it's now way over at the end, but we have one. Hydrogen. We have one. Sulfur, also one. Oxygen, we have four. All right, so let's take a look, ladies and gents, and see what we can do to balance this. Because if we take a quick first glance, we can see that barium's already balanced, sulfur is balanced, and oxygen is balanced. However, chlorine and hydrogen are not. Since we can't get rid of any atoms, then we know we're going to have to build up one side that that the reality is that there weren't uh, there weren't enough on that side. So the product side does not have enough. It's pretty convenient that the hydrogen and chlorine are together in the same compound, and we would ideally like to have two of each of those. So since the only thing that we are allowed to do to balance an equation is to add subscripts to the beginnings of compounds or to the beginnings of molecules, then we're going to go ahead and add a two in front of the hydrogen chloride, the HCl. And when we do that, that changes our hydrogen from one to two, because now we have HCl twice and it changes our chlorine to 2. Now that is balanced, that is balanced, and we have our final answer. There's nothing more you need to do at this point. Your final answer is what's already written in the equation except for you added a 2 to it. So there's nothing else you need to write. You don't need to rewrite the equation. This right here is your final answer. So you just leave it as is. So your final answer is BaCl2 combined with H2O, H2SO4 yields BaSO4 and 
to HCl. Okay, so when you do your work, you are going to do all of this that we did down here. And then at the end, you shouldn't have to write any final answer because you should already have your final answer up above where you've added your uh, coefficients in there. So let's move on to our next one. Let's take a look at this one. Oops, we've already got a mark on here, so we'll erase that to start with. All right, so first thing we do, draw our line. Now we're going to list our elements. We have P, which is phosphorus, and O, which is oxygen. Phosphorus on this side, oxygen on this side. Write them in the same order. On the left side, the reactant side, we have one phosphorus and two oxygen. On the right side, we have four phosphorus and 10 oxygen. Well, we've got some work to do. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, how do we get from two to 10? Remember, we're using multiplication. That's right, we're gonna multiply by five, which means there must have actually been five O2s, five molecules of oxygen gas. That now gives us 10 oxygen, and that is balanced. Now we need to get from one to four. Well, we can multiply by four. Four phosphorus, now that is balanced. So our final answer is four P combined with five O2 produces P4 O10. This is all you have to write down. That is all you need to do for your work. Let's try another one. All right, let's move this over here. So we have KClO3 produces KCl and O2. First thing we will do, whoops, let's get our pen up here. First thing we're gonna do is to draw our line. Now we will list our elements. We have K, which is potassium. We have chlorine. We have oxygen. And on the other side, we have potassium, chlorine, and oxygen. Now we've got a count. On this side, we have one potassium, one chlorine, three oxygens. On the other side, we have one potassium, one chlorine, but two oxygens. All right, well, we were so close, but not quite there. So we're gonna have to do something with these oxygens. And your best bet when you have an odd number and an even number, especially when it's an odd number, like higher than one, you want to really wanna look for what is the least common multiple between those two? Because we can't just multiply two times something and get a three. So we're gonna to have to multiply both of those by something. So let's take a look at our least common multiple between those two. Our multiples of three are three, six, nine, 12, 15, 18, so on and so forth. Oxygen, our multiples are two, four, six, eight, 10, 12. The smallest one that they have in common is six. There are others that they have in common, but the smallest one is six. So we want to get both of these oxygens to six. Well, let's start on the product side where the oxygen is all by itself over here on the right. We can, by putting a coefficient of three in front of the oxygen, we now have O2 three times, which is six oxygens. All right. On the left-hand side, this oxygen over here, we have three. If we multiply it by two, and remember coefficients have to go in front, that gives us six oxygens. But by adding that two to the C KClO3, we've just changed everything in that compound, not just the oxygen. We also changed the potassium to two, and we changed the chlorine to two. Kind of a bummer, because those were already balanced, but we had no choice. In order to balance the oxygen, we had to make that change. So is there a way that we can now go back to the right side and get the K, the K, the potassium, and the Cl, the chlorine, each to two? Well, yes, there is. If we put a coefficient of two in front of KCl, now K is two, 
CL is 2, that's balanced, that's balanced, and that's balanced. So we have a balanced equation. 2KCL O3 yields 2KCL and 3O2. All right. Let's take a look at another. I think I want to go to, let's see. Let's go to this one here. All right, move that up. Here's our line that we always start with. We have copper, we have silver, we have nitrogen, and we have oxygen. Same thing on the other side, copper. Again, it's in a different order. We're going to keep it in the same order. Silver, nitrogen, and oxygen. All right, we have one copper, we have one silver, we have one nitrogen, we have three oxygen. Gets a little trickier on this side. We've got parentheses this time. Copper, well, remember that this subscript over here only goes with the things inside the parentheses. So the copper is just one. Silver, way over here, is just one. Now the nitrogen, because it's in the parentheses and that subscript of two is out there, there are two nitrogens. And because the O3 is in parentheses with that subscript of 2, we have O3 two times, which gives us a total of 6 oxygens. All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we've got an odd number and an even number. Kind of seems like we should do something with that. So let's talk about common multiple between 3 and 6. Well, it would probably be six, so we might be able to leave the right side alone. Let's try working with the left side. How can we get those oxygen to six? Well, again, we can only put coefficients out in front, so we're going to go ahead and put a two in front of the AgNO3, and so that now gives us six oxygen. Well, that certainly looks good. Those are now balanced, but we just changed our AG and our N as well. We changed our silver to 2. We changed our nitrogen to 2. Well, what are we going to do about that? Well, the nitrogen actually is now balanced. That was kind of convenient. By making that change, it actually balanced our nitrogen for us. Our copper is already balanced as well. So is there a way to change just the silver on the right side? Well, yes, there is. If we put a 2 in front of the AG, that will now change that to 2. That is now balanced as well. So our final answer is Cu, and 2 AgNO3 produces CuNO32 and 2 Ag. All right. Let's take a look over here. Bring this up top and draw our line. We have aluminum and oxygen, just two elements this time, aluminum and oxygen. We have two aluminum and three aluminum, uh, three oxygen, excuse me, one aluminum and two oxygen. All right, again, we've got an odd and an even. The odd is more than one, so let's deal with that first. We know that the least common multiple, because we've talked about it before, is 6. So to get to 6, let's go to the product side first, to the right side. I'm going to put a 3 in front of the oxygen, which means that we now have 6 oxygen, because we have O2 three times. In order to get our oxygen on the left side, to 6 as well. We've got to multiply that O3 times 2. We've got to put the 2 out in front. So that's now 6, but that just changed our aluminum. Our aluminum is now Al2 two times, which means that we have four of them. Well, our aluminum needs to be balanced. How can we get this one aluminum to four aluminums? Well, we'll put a 4 in front. That's now four aluminums. That is balanced. And our final answer is 2Al2O3 
produces 4Al and 3O2s. All right, let's try one more. Last one. Here we go. Oh, we got some sort of mark on here, so let's see if we can't get rid of that. Um, that didn't work. Let's try the eraser. There we go. All right, so let's go ahead and draw our line. Now we have sodium, we have oxygen, we have hydrogen, we have, well, we have hydrogen again. We don't need to write it again. And then we have chlorine. So same elements, other side, different order, but we're going to keep them in the same order. So here we go. Let's go back to the left side. We have one sodium, one oxygen. For the hydrogen, we've got one here and one here. That means we actually have a total of two. They just don't happen to be in the same compound. Then we have one chlorine. If we go to this side, we have one sodium. We have one oxygen. We have two hydrogen over there in that water molecule. And we have one sodium, or one chlorine, excuse me. Sodiums are one, oxygens are one, hydrogens are two, chlorines are one. There is nothing we need to do here. This is a balanced equation. If you run into something like this, all you're going to do is write the word balanced right beside it, and there is nothing else you need to do to that equation. It has already been done for you. All right, ladies and gentlemen, go tackle that sheet. If you have questions, feel free to, to get a hold of me, contact me, and we'll take a look at it together.